Hello, I am Dr. B. J. D. Kalyani, working as associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In today's video, I will discuss about memory subsystem organization and interfacing. At the end of this video, the student will gain knowledge regarding what is uh, computer memory, what purpose it is using, and what are various types of memory, what is memory hierarchy, and what are the features of various memory, how memory can be accessed. The basic agenda of this video is introduction, what are types of memory, what is primary memory, what is catch and memory, what is secondary memory, and the memory hierarchy. From the block diagram of computer, you can know that there are three major units of the computer. The first unit is the input unit, the second unit is the CPU, third unit is the output unit. In the CPU, there are three subsystems available. They are the control unit, memory unit and arithmetic and logical unit. In this video, we will focus upon the memory. The memory is majorly used for storage of information, data and programs. So here memory can be a continuous storage cells. Each cell can be identified with a unique number that we can generally refer as memory address. Two registers are majorly used to perform read and write operations on the memory. There are two operations we can perform on the memory. One is read operation. In order to fetch data from the memory, the read operation can be used. The write operation can be used to store any information or transformation of information to the memory. And here, these read and write operations can be performed along with the two resistors. The resistors are MAR and MDR. MAR is memory address resistor. MDR is memory data resistor. The data that is going to be written to the memory can be holded in the MDR. The location at which this operation can be performed, the address of that memory cell can be stored in the MAR. By with the help of these re two resistors, the memory operation can be completed successfully. So here a memory is a collection of storage cells together with associated circuits needed to transfer information in and out of storage. So we can perform the read and write operations on the memory. The memory store binary information in group of bits called words. So collection of bits can has to be used to store the information that we generally refer as word. A group of 8 bits is a byte. The internal structure of memory unit is separated by the number of words it contains and the number of bits in each word. So here this can be generally referred as storage capacity of the memory. So here how many number of words can has to be stored in the memory and what are the bits per word can be taken into account in order to mention the storage capacity of the memory. So here special input lines called address lines select one particular word. So here address lines can has to be used to select a specific location of the memory. So each word in the memory is assigned an identification number called address. So this identification we generally refer to as memory address. It can be starting from 0 to 2 power n minus 1. So this is the memory subsystem. And how the operations can be performed to the memory? How the connections of main memory to the CPU can be described here by using this circuit. In the processor, two special registers are available. Those are called MAR and MDR. MAR is a memory address register. 
एमडी आर इज ए मेमरी डेटा रजिस्टर सो हियर मेमरी कैन बी यूज फॉर स्टोरेज द स्टोरेज कैपेसिटी कैन बी स्पेसिफाइड विद द हेल्प ऑफ एड्रेस लाइन एंड हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ बिट्स पर वर्ड कैन बी स्टोर्ड इन द मेमरी सो हियर If at all there is k bit address lines are there, then up to two power k addressable locations can be available in the memory. And if at all n bit data bus is there, the word length can be specified as n bits. So in this way, by using these address bus and data bus lines, the storage capacity of the memory can be determined. not only these address and data special line can has to be used that is the control line the control line is used to specify what operations to be performed on the memory the general operations that can be performed on the memory are either read or write operation if this operation is completed or not that can be acknowledged with a control line that is called MFC memory function complete. So these are the control lines which can be used to determine the operation to be performed and whether it is completed or not. The acknowledgement with the help of MSC control line. So this is the connection of the main memory to the CPU. And how the storage capacity of the memory can be measured. so the scale of memory measurement can be generally the information can be stored in the memory in the form of bits a bit is a binary digit either it can be 0 or 1 collection of 8 bit is a 1 byte collection of 1024 bytes is a 1 kilobyte collection of 1024 kilobytes is 1 megabyte 1024 megabyte is 1 gigabyte 1024 gigabyte is 1 terabyte 1024 terabyte is 1 petabyte 1024 petabyte is 1 exabyte 1024 exabyte is 1 zettabyte 1024 zettabyte is 1 yottabyte 1024 ettabyte is 1 brontobyte 1024 brontobyte is 1 gigabyte the gigabyte is the highest in memory so nowadays the memory is generally available with the terabytes and petabytes the highest memory storage capacity can be specified in the gigabyte so this is the scale of memory now we have to discuss about what are various varieties of memory majorly there are three varieties of memory one is primary memory second one cache memory third one is secondary memory or in other words we can call it as auxiliary memory primary memory can be referred with another name of main memory it is the built in memory available with the computer system so here the main memory has direct connection with the cpu and it is also known as central memory it is directly connected with the cpu and what is the built in memory that is available with the computer is generally referred as main memory or the primary memory the main memory can store the data and programs that are needed by the cpu the main memory mainly consists of ram which is available with static and dynamic mode so the primary memory generally consists of ram memory and it is of two varieties dynamic and static mode the second variety of memory that is available is the cache memory so cache memory is available on the processor itself this is the high speed small memory that can be placed between the memory and central processing unit so the frequently accessed data and programs can has to be stored in the cache to avoid searching or accessing method from the main memory 
CAT A is usually placed between CPU and the main memory. Next is secondary memory or auxiliary memory. This memory is generally used to storing programs that are needed in the main memory. So this helps in freeing the main memory which can be used, utilized by the other programs that are needed by the main memory. The main function of this memory is to provide parallel searching used for performing a search of the entire board. So in order to execute a program, the program can have to be first stored in the main memory. So this is the main memory and this is the central processing unit. In between central processing unit and the main memory, the cache memory can be placed. What is the frequently accessed data uh, that is needed by the processor from the main memory? It can be bought and stored in the cache memory so that the CPU can look into and take this data more frequently and the speed of operation or the throughput can has to be increased. And if it all these uh, programs that are needed by the main memory can be stored in the secondary storage. Secondary memory. Whenever these programs are needed, those programs can have to be loaded in the main memory, which can be made readily available for the CPU for execution. So these are the three types of the memory. So how this memory system interfacing can be done with the three types of memory. So here we are having the secondary storage or secondary memory devices are magnetic tapes and magnetic disk, which is having a vast storage capacity. Whenever these want to be load the program into the main memory, they can be connected with the IO processor to uh, to send the information to the main memory and this is the mm, cache memory and this is the central processing unit. Main memory is connected directly to the CPU and cache can be placed in between main memory and the central processing unit. The needed programs uh, from the auxiliary memory can be loaded into the main memory via the input output processor. So this is the interfacing of the three types of memory. So the main memory is a central storage unit in a computer and it is made up of integrated chips and this main memory can be generally categorized into two. Those two varieties are RAM RAM and ROM ROM. RAM RAM is random access memory ROM room is read only memory. What is this RAM and ROM? So it is a basic category of the main memory or the primary memory. RAM is able to perform both the read and write operation but ROM is read only memory. So special techniques can has to be used either with the help of electrical signals or with the ultraviolet rows, these right operations can be performed on the ROM. So occasionally the right operations can be supported in the ROM. And RAM is a volatile memory. Whatever information that is stored in the RAM, whenever a power interruption occurs, that information can get erased. ROM is a non-volatile memory. RAM is a temporary memory, ROM is a permanent memory. Now we have to discuss about the what are the differences between uh, by taking consideration of various features between the RAM and ROM. So a form of storage, data storage that can be accessed randomly at any time in any order and from any physical location is generally referred as RAM and the layout of the RAM chip is like this. And the ROM is a form of data storage that cannot be easily altered or reprogrammed. So right operation requires some special attention in case of ROM. The ROM chip can be 
the layout of the rom chip can be like this the full form of ram is random access memory and rom rom is read only memory the usage of ram is read data quickly to run applications it allows both reading and writing in case of rom stores the program requires to initially boot the computer it only allows reading so generally the bootstrap program can be stored on the rom so that's why the firmware concept is come into picture you know that computer can have majorly two parts that is hardware and software the combination of hardware and software is generally called as firmware here rom is a chip it comes under the category of hardware but bootstrap program is a, comes under the software so on the rom chip the bootstrap program is generally stored it is referred as the firmware next feature is the volatility volatility means content can be lost when the device is powered off but in case of rom it is a non volatile next two varieties are available in case of ram that is static ram and dynamic ram in case of rom varied various varieties are available from e prom double e prom like this so these are the differences between ram and rom by considering various parameters how the ram chip can be configured so here this is the example of the ram chip the memory unit which can store two power k words this k can be the k address lines number of address lines and the ram can perform both read write operations so these are the read write control lines and if it all n data input lines are there there the the, the bits per word can be n bits per word the n data output lines come out of the ram so this is the structure of the ram chip in the ram two varieties are there s ram static ram and the dynamic ram so what is the types of the ram so here s ram is static ram so the static ram stored the state of the flip flops uh, and it retains the value indefinitely as long as it kept powered mainly uses to create catch a memory of cpu faster and more expensive memory than the dram the catch a memory generally constructed with the sram and here the flip flops can has to be used as the major component in case of static ram what is dynamic ram is the each cell stores bit with a capacitor and a transistor so the major electronic component is the capacitor here so large storage capacity can be available in case of dynamic ram so here we are using the capacitor as electronic component or the storage element so it requires the refreshing of the memory frequently and it is used to create the main memory slower and cheaper than the sram so these are the features of the dynamic ram and the static ram now we have to discuss about what are the differences between static ram and dynamic ram the static ram is made up of flip flop but the dynamic ram is made up of capacitors the static ram is large in size and dynamic ram is small in size the data store in the form of voltage but here in the form of charge much expensive when compared to dynamic ram so it is cheaper when compared to static ram here the static ram storage capacity is low but it is having the high storage capacity the static ram consume more power when compared to the dynamic ram static ram is fast and dynamic ram is slow so the data sustain with it time but data losses with time so need refreshing of the circuit why because the capacitors need the refreshing 
So this is the differences between SRAM and DRAM. Next, two varieties of the main memory, the RAM and the categories and the features of RAM we discussed. Next, we are moving to the ROM. ROM is used as a storing programs that are permanently reside in the computer. So here, ROM can has to be generally used to store the bootstrap programs. And the basic varieties of ROM is MROM, mask read-only memory, PRAM, programmable read-only memory, EPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory, EEPROM, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, flash EE from memory. So, the flash memories are the last variety of the ROM type. What is the structure of the read-only memory? So, it has to take care address input lines and here m is equal to 2 power k and n data lines can has to be taken by the ROM. So, this is the structure of the ROM chip. And what are the varieties of the ROM along with their features? So, in the ROM, we are having the categories MROM, PROM, EPROM, uh, E square PROM or EE PROM, flash memories are the varieties of the ROM chip. What is mask ROM? So, here in the mask ROM, MROM, the connections are made by semiconductor vendor and it is expensive setup for the cost, several weeks for delivery, high volumes only. And it is a bipolar MOS technology can be used for the MROMs. In case of PROM, programmable read-only memory. So, here vaporize flexible uh, fusible links with the PROM programmer using high voltage. And it is a bipolar technology. One time by the programmable, it can has to be allowed. Only the right operation at one time during manufacturing. So, that variety of ROM chip is generally referred as PROM, programmable read only memory. EPROM is a slight variety of ROM. Here, the program can be erased with the help of uh, ultraviolet rays and it can be programmed again. So, that variety of ROM is EPROM. So, erasable programmable read-only memory and here uh, exposure to ultraviolet rays remove the charge. Only limited erasers can has to be uh, available generally 10 to 100. Next variety is E square PROM. It is a slight variant regarding the E PROM. So, here the erasable operation on the ROM can be performed with the help of electric uh, signals. So, electrically erasable ROM is E PROM or E square PROM. So, here uh, we only limited number of charges or discharge cycles can be available. Those can be generally 10,000. Next is flash memories. So, electronically erasable blocks are the flash memories. They can generally support 1 lakh array cycles and simpler and denser than the E square ROM. So, these are the varieties of ROM. So, here in the memory, majorly three varieties we are discussing that is primary memory, cache memory, secondary memory. In the primary memory, we are having the two varieties. One is RAM. Under RAM, we are having SRAM, DRAM. So, under next ROM, we are having a variety of MROM, PROM, EPROM, E square PROM and flash memories. So, this category and features we completed. Now, we are moving to the cache memory. So, here we have to explain the difference between varieties of ROMs that we discussed along with the features of the ROM. So, here uh, memory type here is the 
read and write operations can be supported in the RAM. And here in case of ROM, uh, the read operation can be performed easily, but a write operation needs special attention. With the help of special signals only this operation can has to be performed. So here we can use the ultraviolet rays, electrical signals or electronic signals. But here uh, the cycles that can be, the erasable cycles that can be supported can be vary with the different ROMs. So this is the summarized features of the primary memory. Now we have to move to the next category that is the cache memory. So the cache memory is a small high speed memory that can be placed between the central processing unit and the main memory. So here from memory to cache, the data transfer can be taken place with the blocks and from cache to CPU, the data transfer can be taken place with the help of words. So here, if at all, a program or data can has to be searched by the CPU. First, it is look into the cache, whether it is available in the cache or not. If at all the data is available in cache, that operation is generally referred as hit. If it is not available, that operation is generally referred as miss. And after it, if it all miss, then the CPU can move to the main memory and search for the uh, program needed program or data. So here, uh, in order to maintain the block transfer and word transfer, uh, synchronize, synchronization can has to be needed. That synchronization mechanism can be performed with the help of mapping functions. So varieties of mapping functions are available in the cache that we will discuss more detailedly regarding the cache memory management. And here, uh, between CPU and main memory, uh, there is a possibility of inserting three levels of cache. The level 1 cache, L1 cache is very close to the CPU, so it is a high speed. Next level 2 cache is in between level 1 and level 3 and it is somewhat slower than level 1 and uh, the speed of operation can be greater than level 3. Next is level 3. It is close to main memory and it can be placed between level 2 cache and the main memory. So the speed can be greater than the main memory and less than the level 2 cache. So three levels of caches can have to be placed between the CPU and main memory. How the accessing mechanism of these levels of cache can be done means there are two possibilities of accessing mechanism. One is simultaneous access memory organization. Second one is hierarchical access memory organization. So what is simultaneous memory organization? So here the levels can has to be parallelly accessed by the CPU in case of simultaneous memory organization. In case of hierarchical organization, the CPU first has to search for level 1. Next, it has to move to the level 2. If it all miss operation, then it has to move to level 3. So, in a hierarchical fashion, the levels of the cache can be accessed in, in case of the second variety of access memory organization. So, we discussed about what is cache, what is hit operation, miss operation, how searching mechanism and accessing mechanism of cache can be carried out. Next, the third type of memory is the secondary memory or axillary memory. Here, the axillary memory is having large volume of storage capacity. Whenever the program and data needed from this memory, then it has to uh, first place the program and data in the main memory so that it can be readily available for the CPU for execution. So, loading of program of data needed by the CPU to the main memory can be recommended here in case of secondary memory. Variety of secondary storage memory devices are available. Coming under the magnetic storage, we are having the hard disk, floppy disk, 
and magnetic tape. So, in case of uh, hard disk, uh, the large volume of storage capacity can be provided. So, with the help of read-write head, the data or program stored uh, on this memory can has to be uh, accessed by the CPU. Next category of auxiliary memory storage devices are optical storage devices. These are the CD, DVD and the Blu-ray disc. Next variety of the flash memory is the pen drives and the scan disk. So these are the various auxiliary memory storage devices which can be plugged to enhance the primary storage capacity of the computer. What is the differences between primary storage devices and the secondary storage devices? The primary storage devices, main memory, primary memory or internal memory, central memory. These terms we have to use to refer the primary storage devices. In case of secondary storage, external memory and auxiliary memory are the terms that can be used to refer the secondary storage. Data is directly accessed by the processing unit in case of primary storage. Why? Because it is connected directly to the CPU. Next, data is first transferred to the main memory and then uh, routed to the processing unit. So, the pro needed programs and data can be loaded to the main memory from the secondary memory. Then only the CPU can easily access the data. Next, semiconductor chips are used to store information in primary memory. But in case of secondary storage devices, magnetic disk, optical disk can has to be used. Next, information stored in the temporary and it can be lost when there is a sudden power cut. So, this feature we referred as volatility. But here in case of secondary storage, information stored is permanent. Next, data operated and stored is uniform manner, but here it is not uniform manner randomly, the data can has to be stored. Next, primary memory devices are more expensive, but the secondary memory devices are somewhat cheaper. And nature parts of the primary memory varieties are RAM and ROM, but in case of here having little slow interactive with the micro processor and here primary memory has limited storage capacity here vast or bulk storage capacity can be support, supported here more examples of the primary memory ram rom cache memory and eprom all these are the varieties of the uh, primary memory and secondary storage devices we are having magnetic tape flash memories uh, floppy disk all comes under the varieties of the secondary memory. So, with this, we discussed about the varieties of the memories. The three categories, under that, what are the various subcategories? So, now we are having varieties of storage element. What is the memory hierarchy? Based on what factors this hierarchy can has to be defined. So, here the first parameter that can be considered is the capacity. The storage capacity of the device can be considered in order to define the hierarchy, memory hierarchy. Next is access time. How fast the information from the memory can be retrieved and stored. Next, the performance, the design issues and the performance. Next, uh, what is the cost per bit? These are the parameters generally used for uh, defining the memory hierarchy of various storage devices. Now, we will discuss about what is the memory hierarchy. So, here on the top of the hierarchy, the CPU registers can be used. So, these are on the CPU. The cache is the next device. Next is the main memory. So, these are directly interacting with the CPU. So, these resistors are readily available on the CPU and later on the high speed uh, device is the uh, level 1, level 2, level 3 cache and next is main memory, later on the secondary memory. 
Why? Because the data and the programs from the secondary memory can be loaded to the primary memory. Then only they are connected with the CPU for execution. So this is the storage element hierarchy. When uh, coming, uh, uh, when while discussing with this, uh, from whenever you uh, traversing from top to bottom, the storage capacity can be increased. Resistors are very small capacity storage capacity. Let on catch a main memory, but the vast volume storage capacity can be available for the secondary memory. So the access time increase with the distance from CPU. So all these are readily available with the CPU. So the top three layers can has the um, somewhat speed of accessing, but secondary memory is slow when compared to the primary memory. And cost per bit decrease with distance from CPU. So here, how much the storage capacity cost per bit can has to be decreased from the distance from CPU. So here, the capacity increases with distance from CPU. The high storage capacity mediums are the secondary storage devices. So here, this is the storage elements, how they are placed in the memory hierarchy. We discussed about what is the memory and how the what are the resistors that can be support to perform the major two operations in the memory uh, read write operations. How the completeness of operation can be acknowledged with the MFC. How address lines and data lines can be connected with the memory and what are the three varieties of memory. Under that each variety, what are the sub varieties, the features and the differences between various memories can be discussed. And how these storage elements can be arranged in a hierarchy based on what parameters this hierarchy can be defined we discuss. Now we will discuss about some of the uh, in, uh, critical thinking questions regarding the memory. So here the first problem is. A processor can support a maximum memory of 4 gigabytes and where the memory is word addressable, a word is generally consists of 2 bytes, okay. A byte is 8 bits. So, 16 bits is generally referred as a word. The size of address bus of the processor is at least dash bits. So, address bus, address line, how many bits it has to be processed. So here maximum memory is 4 gigabytes. So 2 power which can has to be equal to 4 gigabytes. 2 power 32 can be used to 4 gigabytes. Next since one word consists of 2 bytes total number of words is 2 power 32 is the maximum capacity and per one word is having 2 bytes. So 2 power 32 by 2. 2 power 31. So here the address, uh, the so to address these words we need minimum 31 bit address bus. So here the 31 bits is the minimum 31 bits address can has to be address bus can be needed to access the uh, memory of maximum capacity of 4 GB and each word it is a word addressable memory. Next coming to the next problem, how many address and data lines will be there for a 16 by 32 memory system. So here uh, there are 16 uh, M words, the number of address lines can be 2 power 24 can be 16. So 24 address lines, uh, 16 megabytes. So 24 is the mm, address lines, number of address lines that are required to address and the data lines are here 32. So the word size is 32 bits. So the number of data lines will be 32. So here to access this 16M 32 bit, we required a 24 address lines and 32 data lines.
next coming to the next problem for a 2 kilobytes and 2k by 16 memory system that uses a decoder to select a word the total number of external connections to the memory system including address data control and power signals will be at least so what are the number of lines that can be used for address data control and power signals in case of 2k by 16 memory system so here there will be 11 lines so why because 2 power 11 is equal to 2k so here 11 address lines can be required and for the data 16 uh, lines for data so here address lines are 11 16 lines for data and 2 lines for power supply 2 lines for read and write lines so totally 31 lines can has to be required assume that there is a 1 gigabyte by 1 DRAM memory cell array is organized in 1 megabyte rows and 1 kilobyte columns. The number of address bits required to select a row and a column will be. So, how a two dimensional array can have to be accessed, which is having the capacity of 1 gigabyte by 1. Since there are 1 megabyte rows, the number of address lines can be 2 power 20 is 1 megabyte. So, 20 address lines can be required. And also selecting one of the 1k columns, number of column address lines are 2 power 10 is equal to 1k. So, 20 are used to access the row and 10 is used to access the column. So, that is the answer. Next, to build a 1 gigabyte by 16 memory system, the number of 256 megabytes by 8 memory modules required will be. So, here how many number of memory modules are required to build 1 gigabyte by 16 memory system. So, here um, 4 into 256 megabytes is the 1 gigabyte. Here 256 m by 8 memory modules how many are required. So, 4 into 256 is equal to 1 GB and so therefore 4 modules here required uh, for the address and for data 2 into 8 is equal to 2 into 8 is equal to 16. So, hence the number of memory modules required are 4 into 2, 8 modules are required to access the memory of this 4 1 GB by 16 memory system. So, if a memory has 10 address lines and the size of each addressable location block is 4 bytes, then what is the maximum storage capacity of the memory. So, address lines can has to be provided 10. So, 2 power 10 is the storage capacity here and the size of the each memory addressable location is the 4 bytes. So, here the storage maximum storage capacity 4 into 2 power 10 that is 4 GB is the storage capacity of the memory. So, like this depending upon the address lines data lines how storage capacity of the memory can be calculated. A variety of simple problems can be given in various competitive exams. So, in this video, we discussed about what is memory and how the memory can be scaled and what are the features of the memory and what are various varieties of memory with uh, while uh, uh, contrast and uh, comparing various features of uh, varieties of memory and we move on to um, how the memory hierarchy can be defined based on various parameters and simple problems related to estimate the storage capacity of the memory. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.